Excellencies, Honorable Guests, Minister of Finance of the Republic of Indonesia, Central Bank, Governor of the Republic of Indonesia, Ambassador David uh, Merrill, and uh, all distinguished guests that I cannot name it one by one. Good evening. Uh, to be honest to all of you, I don't know I have to be here tonight. Yeah, my background is military. I'm really professional military. Uh, this is also the problem with uh, Ambassador Bob, you know. Because uh, early day when I was very young, captain, I was trained in the Special Forces course in Fort Bragg. I spent two times in Fort Bragg. So then American brain was me, you know. So it's <laughs> <laughs> and I study very much about, you know, about yeah, how to destroy everything, you know. That's, that's my job. Today I have to build. So this is a paradox. Maybe this is mystery of life. This is maybe my destiny. I'm maybe, if I may, uh, introduce a little bit myself. That's my background. So I went to a special service course in the UK. Then I went also to GSD 9 in Germany. I spent one year in Germany. So, to be honest to all of you, I don't understand this life. Why I have to be here tonight? <laughs> and then I have to talk something which is I never ever learned before. I learned before how to shoot, how to parachute, because I was uh, the first Halo instructor from Fort Bragg. So I'm the, the first instructor, uh, Bob. This is a problem with, you know, with your Special Forces here. <laughs> but anyway, I'm here today. I have to you know, do my job. And uh, Ibu Ani, my colleague, and also uh, pa Agus. Um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Indonesia is the largest and probably the most diverse archipelagic country. If you look at this slide, maybe some of you not really realize how big Indonesia is. Um, when I met the Prime Minister Abe, I was thinking what should I explain first, you know, because uh, it is early this year. And then I finally prepared this slide and I told the Prime Minister, this is uh, Indonesia Prime Minister, this is Marauke, this is Sabang. And Sabang to Marauke is like eight hours flying time. Where Jakarta, Jakarta to Tokyo, only six hours, 40 time, uh, 45 minutes. And immediately the Prime Minister, oh, height, 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 height. And, and uh, this is the, the introduction of Indonesia and consists of 17,000 islands. If you don't believe me, you can count by yourself. And uh, 54,000 uh, kilometer coastline and more than 300 ethnic groups and 700 local uh, languages. That's Indonesia all about. You are not talking other things. I experience. When I was active, military active, touring around the country, I can see the diversity of Indonesia. I can see the how rich Indonesia. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you move to the Indonesian economy today, our GDP, I think, around one trillion US dollar, which is, I think, very good. But if you look at also the prediction of World Economic Forum, the issue sometimes ago, by 2030, our economy GDP is going to be around 5.4 trillion US dollar, and our income per capita is going to be 30,000 US dollar. This is, I think, a very, very important to understand that Indonesia is moving very well. If you look at also this chart, you see that our economy, uh, since 2011, basically our economy already uh, went down. But then by 2015, the President Joko Widodo with his own policy, then he worked very hard, I was chief of staff at the time, you look at the chart, then our economy moving up. So then Indonesia uh, uh, have achieved economic growth around 5% over the past few years, which is I think a very good combination of uh, Minister Ani and Governor uh, Agus right now, I think make our economy quite stable. And I believe with the data that we have, that our economy is going to be around 5.2% this year, and maybe next year going to be around 5.4%. Uh, 
the, econ the good economic condition has created more jobs. This is, I think, very important. But if we look at also the technology, the robotic, artificial intelligence, there's still question mark. Uh, because when you're talking about artificial intelligence, you're talking about robotic and less job opportunity because the robotic more efficient than human being. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, as part of Indonesia's long-term development strategy, Indonesia vision is to be a strong, again, to be strong, independent, and default maritime nation that can actively and positively contribute to peace and security in the region beyond. If you look at the position of Indonesia, I think it's very strategic. Then sometimes we don't realize that Indonesia, 79%, uh, covered by water, while the water very rich. If you look at also the data that we have today, I think we can harvest or we can create economy around 1.43 trillion US dollar from that uh, area. While today only 8 percent that we have done so far. Ladies and gentlemen, there are seven pillars of maritime economic development. Like uh, you see in the at the slide, maritime economic development. This is, I think, the area that we are working on today. Ladies and gentlemen, Blue Economy Agenda. Uh, tonight, I will highlight some of Indonesia's uh, Blue Economy Agenda. Indonesia aims to lower uh, logistic costs to improve competitiveness. This is, I think, very important. That we build infrastructure. We look at also the cost structure at the seaport. Uh, and we make it simple. We make it, uh, we lower the cost. We like to see the competitiveness of Indonesia on the infrastructure uh, area. The government targeted increased contribution to renewable energy in our economy mixed to 23% in 2025, with total potential reaching 800 gigawatt. With the technology today, with uh, uh, fuel, uh, the, uh, the, with the, high, the sorry, with the renewable energy today, like uh, solar panel, like uh, uh, geothermal, the cost right now with the technology um, less and less. So this is, I think, the challenge for Indonesia. The other issue is marine debris problem. Indonesia is one of the leading country for the initiative in the UN Ocean, June 2017. Plastic debris used to be. What's the plastic debris issue? But right now we understand this is the very, very important issue because it could uh, jeopardize or could damage the health of the next generation. So we work very hard right now with the UN, and this is one of the agenda for the next uh, annual meeting in Bali. Tourist development in new era area to diversity the economy. This is, I think, very important, and we are moving very well on this particular area. And we believe by 2019, our revenue, the highest, is from uh, tourist uh, industry. Uh, to spend around 450 billion uh, up to uh, 2019 on infrastructure development. And more than 50% will be allocated for power, electricity, infrastructure, seaport, and roads. But how do we get this one? I think Ibu Ani can maybe cover 25%. Now, how do we get the 75%? Now, we work very much. How do we do it? A lot of uh, 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 way to do so, and right now we hire or we recruit the young chap, young men, young uh, women to be part of our team, to make it efficient any project of the government, any project of the government for the infrastructure, like CTOL, uh, toll road, electricity, and something like this. As part of this initiative, 2019, Indonesia planned to build, like the slide that you show you, five deep sea ports and uh, upgrade the nine cargo airports. So infrastructure, our project, a very, very important till 2019. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, we understand that further cooperation with various countries would create an even higher economic growth prospect. Indonesia has attended the Belt and Road Forum recently, and we expect further cooperation with China. 
The cooperation could bring around 60 billion US dollar of the new investment from China to Indonesia. And we, we most importantly, would like to promote better cooperation between the two countries. I believe this would also help reduce tension in the area to some extent. For this, we have prepared an integrated area development. We don't want just to offer one project. We like to see the integrated, holistic approach. We have a showcase in Morowali. So case in Morowali, they built the, uh, the power plant, they built uh, a smelter, and uh, they built their own seaport. So one, one uh, holistic, uh, one integrated project. And then the government prepare a land, licenses, and etc. <clears throat> So this is it works. So this one can be uh, implemented, implemented in some area like in in Manado, in uh, North uh, Kalimantan, as well as in uh, North Sumatra and uh, Bali. Legend Dynamal Renewable Energy. This one also area that we are uh, working very hard. Like if you look at a slide here, you're talking about the geothermal, hydro, bioenergy solar, wind, and ocean wave. Now we have already this one, ocean wave. We have one project in uh, Flores, 30 megawatt. So we move very quick because we understand that we're not realized to uh, always with, uh, you know, with uh, only fossil energy. Fossil energy uh, today, the cost higher and higher and higher, while the renewable energy cost lower and lower and lower. lower. Indonesia is facing huge electricity demand, challenge, challenge with the level of electricity per capita that is still low even when compared to its neighbor, neighboring countries. The electricity use per capita currently is at about 0.8% uh, cent per kilowatt hour compared with Singapore 8.8 .8 cents per kilowatt hour and Malaysia 4.6 uh, cent per kilowatt hour. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the potential of renewable energy is big with current utilization only reaching 1% of 800 uh, gigawatt, uh, mega, megawatt. The renewable energy potential consists of geothermal like I mentioned earlier. It's well understood that 80% of marine debris is originated from land. This is, I think, one issue that we're going to tackle very much. So this is one of the agenda that we're going to uh, do one pilot project, the Chitarun project. This is initiative include, includes uh, in, uh, increased public awareness, waste monitoring, and requiring waste water treatment for industry along the river. Plastic, plastic tar road, I think we, this is one of the pilot projects also in Indonesia today to reduce a plastic bag uh, in Indonesia. Ladies and gentlemen, we acknowledge that marine debris is a transitional problem and hence need a trans transnational solution. Indonesian government has played an important leadership role in the world and was very active in the diplomacy of marine plastic debris. In the past five years, tourism has grown almost two times economic growth and received highest foreign exchange reserve outside of the commodity sector. In addition, tourist, tourism is a sector that has high employment creation. Every one new employment in the tourist industry will create 1.5 to 2 uh, employment in the supporting industry. To develop tourism in that sector, we are now developing an integrated approach to create 10 new tourism area this tourism area involves in false connectivity infrastructures and resort management. This area includes Toba, Borobudur, Mandalika, Labuan Bajo, Tanjung, Clients, and etc. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, Indonesia has entered a new era of governance in which government decision-making process until implementation is a faster and better coordination. This is, I think, the, the new era of Indonesia. The decision-making process, which is, I think, very important, we have to do it holistically. We have to do it integratedly. Otherwise, not going to move very quick. So we experienced the last three years with this style
then we can solve the problem uh, very fast, very um, decisive, and we can move very quick. Uh, this has led the highest confidence in the government. In fact, current consumer confidence index is close to the highest point for the last 12 years. If you look at this data, we have the highest for the last 10, uh, 12 years. Uh, we uh, collect the data and my staff doing this one and we are very proud of this. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, based on the recent uh, OECD survey, if you look at this one, Indonesia and, uh, and Switzerland on the top, we get 80% uh, uh, in 2016. They put Indonesia rank uh, significantly increasingly. So this is, I think, uh, give Indonesia uh, potential to move forward very fast in the near future. Ladies and gentlemen, the Indonesian government has implemented various policies in the promote growth, reduce inequality, and maintain security and stability. So, next year we're going to host an uh, annual meeting IMF World Bank in Bali. So, the preparation for this, I think we are doing also very well. Uh, integrated, like I said to you, any problem solution over there. The holistic approach. Minister Ani, myself, uh, Governor, uh, Central Bank, we work together. We work together to solve any problem. Also, we go with the, uh, work with the other uh, ministry. So the preparation right now, I would like to report to inform to you, all of you, we are still on the right track. The only problem that we cannot predict about uh, volcanoes. <laughs> That's one we need some, you know, uh, yeah some more experience for that because nobody uh, dare to say that they can predict what's going to happen with the volcano Agung, Agung volcano uh, next month or next year. But we believe, we are very confident that combination between the, the science and the priest, uh, prayer in, uh, in uh, uh, Besaki uh, temple is going to work. You know. so, I would like to inform you, ladies and gentlemen, we are ready to host this, uh, this uh, annual meeting. I uh, think around 189 uh, countries and uh, around 17,000 uh, people going to attend this, uh, this uh, annual meeting. And we need your support. And I believe the material already prepared by Ibu Ani and she's uh, uh, Sometimes I'm proud to be Indonesian uh, to look at her, you know, her uh, friendship within the World Bank. You know, she is very well known in World Bank, and I thought that oh, who is the president of World Bank? I thought that she was Sri Mulyani, you know, but uh, that's how popular uh, she is, you know. So I'm really very proud working with her and also with Pa, uh, pa Agus. So, ladies and gentlemen. We are open for cooperation with other countries and we welcome all of you to come to Indonesia during uh, IMF World Bank uh, meeting, annual meeting next year. And don't forget, tell your friend in America and my friend uh, Chapman, invest in Indonesia more. <laughs> and open your office in Indonesia, not in Singapore. Uh, I <laughs> sincerely <laughs> encourage you to open your uh, office in Jakarta. We have everything in Jakarta, don't worry. Security in Indonesia, quite okay lah, better. So, uh, yeah, we are doing very well today. And uh, we are a big country, a rich country, and we are very, uh, very motivated country today with the leadership of President Joko Widodo. Thank you very much. Um, for your